Hello and welcome to Internships 101. My name is Kelsey and I am the Internship Coordinator for Career Services. I'm going to talk with you about the basic steps for completing an internship for college credit, as well as some resource that we have for you to help guide you through this experience. So first and foremost, why should you do an internship? Well, an internship is going to give you the hands-on experience that you need to help you feel more secure after graduation. You're going to be able to test out potential careers and get a feel for the type of industry that you want to work in. Employers like to see internships on students' resumes, and it shows from a 2018 survey that it is one of the top attributes in evaluating graduates for hire. Even though the survey is from a few years ago, it is still very relevant and to the industry work today. At Central, internships need to be department approved prior to accepting. That means once you start looking for an internship, be sure your internship faculty advisor is included in this journey so that they can let you know if the experience will count or not. You also want to make sure that the internship is aligning with your program and interests which are things your advisor can help you with along the way. And remember that internships can be pretty flexible and that you can work full-time or part-time, intern on campus even, or get paid for your time if that's possible with your company. Just remember to keep working with your department as well as the employer that you're hoping to get the internship with to know the parameters. I wanted to focus a little on this topic because it is an important one to make note of. In terms of credits, 40 hours equals one internship credit. So when thinking about how many credits you are doing, remember the total hours as well. You will split these hours up between time on the job and time doing the homework side of things. Discuss with your internship advisor how that will get broken down. If you are planning to do a 290 or exploratory internship, you're gonna be able to take up to eight credits during the term. If you're doing a standard 490 internship, you can actually take up to 12. And those planning on doing a graduate level internship or 590 can, can take up to eight credits in a given term, but that's actually all they're able to take. But remember to talk with your department because sometimes there is flexibility with graduate level internships. So just ask the questions if you're wondering. Undergraduates can take a total of 20 credits for their internship spanning through different quarters. So you can do internship as the same internship, multiple quarters or do multiple internships in different quarters. You just cannot go over 20 total credits. And if you have any questions about the specific credits, you can chat with your department about what they require and with me further as well. Something to make note of is that if you are an F1 student, the internship process will be a little longer. You will need to make sure that you are working with the international department the whole time throughout your internship search and paperwork process. And if you're planning to do an internship abroad, you have to stay connected with the Office of Study Abroad as well. But if you're not sure where to start and you are wanting to study abroad or you're an international student, just reach out to either of those departments and they are happy to help. Now let's dive into the internship process itself. This is the basic checklist that you will follow when starting on your internship journey. I'm gonna break it down step-by-step step for you. And if you have any questions, just feel free to email our office or refer back to our website. So your first step is gonna be making sure that you are eligible for the internship. So you wanna make sure that you are in good academic standing when starting your internship journey. If you have any holds on your account, that's actually gonna stall the registration later on in the process. So be sure to check out your accounts for these. Also make sure you're checking your transcripts and ask your internship advisor if you have completed the required 90 cumulative credits to be eligible. And if they're not sure, you can either then even talk to registrars or your academic advisor might know as well. If you're doing a stand, an exploratory 290 internship, you actually only need to have 45 cumulative credits under your belt. So even though you need 90 or 45 cumulative credits, only 15 of those have to be from Central Washington University. So that means if you have any transfer credits, those can count towards your internship eligibility. The next step is to work on finding and securing an internship site. Now, searching for an internship can be a daunting task, and if you're not sure where to start, it may be a bit overwhelming. 
Our office tries to ensure that students get some needed resources when on the job hunting. And if you ever get stuck along the way, just reach out and ask. One of the resources that we have to offer is the Wildcat Career Network. It's a great network for you to find employers that are looking specifically for CWU students. And as a bonus, this is where your internship application is housed. So you're able to check that out as well. You should also reach out to your department because oftentimes they have made connections along the way and work with different companies through events or past internship experiences. Career Services also has quarterly events that students can network and connect with employers at. So be sure to check out our website for when these are occurring and make sure you see who is coming to the events to see if you want to be in attendance. Remember that even some bigger companies have events that they host as well. So always check the different websites to see what's available. There are also lots of general job boards you can check out when you, where you can find some good internship postings, as well as different targeted job boards that are more focused on internships themselves. And if the company that you're interested in has specific websites, which most are going to, you can see if they have any postings directly on their site. Really be sure to look anywhere and everywhere you can and utilize those contacts you already may have in your toolbox. So along with that, you will be making sure to identify who your internship advisor is and the course details for your internship as well. And it's important to really figure out who that internship advisor is going to be early on so that when you're doing the step before, figuring out kind of where to intern, they're able to help you a little bit as well. And since you need department approval for the internship you choose, it's really nice to have that conversation already started with your department so that you kind of know what you need to do. And really be sure to utilize this academics worksheets, academic worksheet, because it helps you kind of know what things you need to put in your internship application from your department. This has things like the course prefix, the course, the number of credits, um, your faculty advisor's name and email, and they can even help you with who the chair and dean is as well if you're not sure. And then it also, talks about what activities and objectives you have. And this is how it's broken down in the application. So it really helps a lot. The back side of this is gonna talk about your learning objectives and activities. And this is really where you can write in at least three. Most departments have a minimum of three learning objectives that they want you to write out. And you can write those out, what activities go with it, and then transfer this into your application once you've worked with your internship advisor. So it's a great resource for you to utilize to get some basic details for your application. The next step is to purchase your liability insurance. This is a requirement for all central students doing an internship. So basically you would have two choices, either medical or non-medical liability insurance. If you are working at a company that is a medical company, hospital clinic, EMT, EMS, those kind of things, you'll most likely have a medical insurance requirement. And if not, then it's the, just the non-medical for standard internships. I believe it is around $9 for a standard intern or internship insurance for the liability insurance. And I believe the medical is 14. Now it could be changing because September is when the new rollout happens for intern or for, excuse me, for medical and non-medical liability insurance. And so keep an eye out, prices might change. But if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out. So if your internship is located in a medical or health facility, you actually might have a pre-internship file attached to your application. So these are going to be the files that connect with our current affiliation list on our website. They're most likely your medical facilities, and you can look through the list to see if your company is on there. Once you've seen that your company has one, you will read through the contract, email us if you can't find it yourself. I think most of them you'd have to reach out to us and ask, but sometimes the companies can provide them for you to see what additional requirements they need you to do to add your application. Most of the time, these things needed are extra vaccinations, background checks, different testing, et cetera. Be sure to work with your employer if you have any questions with the affiliation agreement, and you can also reach out to our office if you get stuck. It's really better to ask if your company has an affiliation agreement versus assuming it doesn't and then finding out too late that you have to go get a bunch more authorizations prior to starting your hours. Next step is to work on that online application in the Wildcat Career Network. 
The steps here are outlined, but I would really like to show you firsthand what it looks like to find the application on your own to help you understand a little bit better. So we're gonna share a new screen here. I'm gonna go into my CWU homepage. When you're in your My CWU homepage, you're gonna see most likely on the right-hand side applications, and you're gonna click into the Wildcat Career Network. Now, if you've never logged in before, it's gonna probably have you answer some questions. It'll basically ask you kind of what you're interested in for jobs, internships, what kind of area of interest you have as well. So just check those out. It'll only take a few minutes and be sure to click internships if it ever asks you about them so that you can see this tab here on the upper corner. Now, the Wildcat Career Network has recently gone through a upgrade and update. So you'll no longer see a left-hand tab bar here. Everything is located in the center or up here on the right-hand top corner. So internships are located just over here on the left-hand side in a box labeled internships and cooperative learning. And you will click that and you'll add a new experience. Now, if you've done internships in the past, you're gonna see them listed below here. And if you've been working on one in a draft form, you can edit your draft as you go. So you'll wanna add this new button and you'll see all the basic things that you'll need to fill out. And our step-by-step -step checklist we have been talking about is located just right here. So if you ever need to refer back to it, it's in your application for you to check out. And the insurance that I talked about, there's two links here for you. So you can even just purchase right from the application and not have to worry about going back to our website at all. We tried to make this application as user-friendly as possible so that you could get lots of information while you were filling it out. Most of these sections are gonna be basic information that you already know about yourself, your employer, your department, and your emergency contact. So you can actually go through, I always suggest to go through it so when you're able to log in and fill out the things that you can fill out. And then when you get to the bottom and you filled out certain things you can do on your own, you're gonna save it as a draft. And then when you need to come back and maybe insert all the things you and your academic, or your, excuse me, your internship faculty advisor have worked on like the objectives and activities, then you can come back and put those informations in and then save it again. When you are completely done and you filled out all of your course information, academic details, attached to your liability insurance, gone through the sections and made sure that your placement information is put in correctly, your internship dates are proper, all of that jazz, then you're gonna go and you're gonna submit it. And once you have submitted the application, it's going to show up here in your files, but it will come directly to me for me to approve and send through to DocuSign. So, once you have done that and you've pushed the submit button, you may not quickly see you know, what's going on in terms of where it's at. And so you can always ask me questions about where your application is in the process. But once I have gone through the Wildcat Career Network and approved your application, it's going to go into a software called DocuSign. So DocuSign will send you an email automatically when I send it out to there and it will send you a basically a link that says to review your DocuSign agreement and sign off on it. You're going to be the first one to get the agreement and then just so you know your faculty advisor will get it next then you're the chair of your program your site supervisor and then the dean and remember, if you are international or abroad, you're gonna have an extra signature in there for those departments. And the final signature is from me, and that's where you'll be registered. So if you're not sure at any point where your application is, just reach out to me and ask. So I wanted to show you what the, app, what the email will look like. So when you have been notified that your application is approved, you'll get an email that looks like this sent to you. It's gonna most likely come from CWU Career Services via DocuSign, and we'll have information in the bulk section that looks similar to this, but with your information. You're gonna click the yellow review document button and it's going to take you into this page here that's going to show you your learning agreement. So instead of it being blank, it's obviously gonna have your information in it and we'll have an arrow showing you which pieces you'll need to fill out and make notes of. And if you notice reading through it that there are changes that need made or edits that need to be done, just let us know so that we can go back into your Wildcat application and either change it or accept the changes that you've done and send it back to DocuSign. 
All changes have to be made at the Wildcat Career Network level and not DocuSign. So if you have any questions or concerns, just let me know so we can get it resent back out for signatures. And if you have questions about how to sign off on it or you're struggling with DocuSign, just let us know. But once you have submitted it, it's gonna directly go to the next person in line, which is your internship faculty advisor. And so you may not see where it's at next, um, but as soon as you sign it, it automatically goes to the next person and the same after that. So it should be quickly going through as long as everybody is keeping track of their emails and their junk files as well, because oftentimes things like DocuSign agreements can get sent to spam and junk email. So if you're noticing it's been stalled for a while, let your the next in line, either your internship advisor, they usually will be quick about it. But if your site supervisor hasn't signed off, let them know to check their junk files as well. During the time of other people signing the DocuSign, you may be feeling a bit like you're in limbo. So just remember to please reach out and ask how your application is going and if it's stalled at all. I know I said that before, but it's just important to know that you can always reach out and ask questions. And while approval is being made, some students are able to actually start their internship hours for approval from their department. And oftentimes, if applications take a while for full approval, you will end up starting your hours before fully registered. And as long as your application was submitted in advance of your dates, it's okay to do that since you've had that department approval. So make sure you're asking your department and keeping in contact with your internship faculty advisor so that you know what to do. And just remember to also check in with your advisor because they will have you be doing activities and assignments as needed as well. So you wanna keep that communication flowing throughout your hours. And you are also going to be doing a final evaluation at the end of your internship. So keep an eye out for that automatic email that will come out and you will fill it out and submit it just like you would your internship application. It'll be an automatic thing. So you won't have to worry about asking about it. It just comes directly to your email. I wanted to put in our basic email or our basic office communication in case you wanted to schedule an appointment directly with one of our career counselors or with myself as well. So if you were thinking you needed some resume or cover letter advice, as well as mock interviews or job search tips, if you're really getting stuck finding an internship, you can schedule an appointment with one of our career counselors. And then if you wanna schedule an appointment directly with me, here's my contact information as well. And I have two emails, so you can email our internships email and get me directly for internship questions, or you can email my work email and get me, and I'm happy to answer either one, as well as give me a call or schedule an appointment with me on bookings as well. So thank you. And then all of our information is on our website. So please feel free to check out cw.edu backslash career for all internship information and questions.